Hello and welcome to Living in Victory. I'm Pastor Roger, pastor of Victory Center Church, and you are joining us for an exciting part three of a three-part series we're doing with Gary Price. And uh, if you haven't watched the first part or the second part, please do that. Also, the November 17th, 2019 uh, message at Victory Center Church entitled uh, Faith Says. That would be great to start with that. Watch part one, part two, and then part three. And they're, they're all together. Gary? Praise the Lord. This is awesome. Wow. Praise God. Well, if can we start with the prophecy again? Amen. Okay. For sure. Uh, and I want to not start at the beginning, but um, where it begins when it, what is written in the book of Revelation. I'd like to just step through those scriptures quickly if we could, but I want to read this one part of this first. <clears throat> it says, what is written in the book of Revelation chapter 21, 1 through 7, has happened in the Spirit. Now, keep that in mind. It's happened in the Spirit realm to every member of my body in their new birth. In other words, when you were born again. It is a new creation reality now. I and my body have been crowned with glory and honor. All the works of my Father have now been restored into the hands of the body. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You, you, anybody that has been born into the kingdom of God is part of his body. Amen. And all the works, according to this, all the works of the Father's hands have now been placed or restored into the hands of the body. We've been put back into that position that the first Adam and the last Adam was in because we are now in him. Praise the Lord. But it says what's written in the book of Revelation 21, 1 through 7 has happened in the spirit to us already. So maybe we can read through those scriptures. Yeah, that'd be awesome. <coughs> Revelation 21. And, you know, keep in mind the intent of this from my perspective is not, I know there's a lot of teaching on the book of Revelation out there. Um, and I've probably seen or been through much, much of it, <laughs> if not most. But about three or four years ago, the Lord spoke to me. And, you know, I was trying to read through the book of Revelation. And, you know, your head just goes tilt many times. And the Lord spoke to me clearly. He said, I want you to forget everything you've ever learned about the book of Revelation. Everything. Just push it aside. He didn't say it was wrong what I'd learned. He just told me to forget it and allow me, allow God to show, begin to show me uh, by the Spirit of God things from the book. Not that I have a full grasp of the book of Revelation. I'm not suggesting that. But this is what he said in the prophecy. He said, what's happened in the verses that we're about to read has happened inside of you in the spirit realm already. And Revelation 21.1 says, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And as I, as I was meditating on this and thinking about it that Saturday morning on the 14th of September, um, I began to see how throughout the scripture, God makes all things new, number one. Amen. And number two, he makes two one. Think about that. As a husband and wife, when they come together, the two become one, right? When Jesus comes into your life, your spirit and his spirit become one, according to uh, 1 Corinthians six seventeen, You are one spirit inside in him. Praise God. And here, he said, I, John saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea. And here's what I heard. The, there's been a new creation. <laughs> oh, new creation. A new creation. As Adam was placed in the garden, and I believe the garden in Genesis 1 represented the kingdom of God on earth. When Adam was placed in that, right, to, and then given his mandate, which is effectively our mandate. But now with the second Adam, the kingdom comes inside of us. 
We are carriers, according to Luke 17, when the Pharisees came to Jesus and said, well, when will this kingdom show up? He said that the kingdom doesn't come with observation. Mm. Some will say, lo, here is the kingdom or there is the kingdom. But the kingdom resides in us. Praise the Lord. Amen. And 2 Corinthians 5, 17 clearly says, if any man be is in Christ, he is a new creation. He's a new creation right now. All things are passed away. All things have become new. Praise God. Heaven, that heaven and that earth have come together in us. But it's just, it's more, a lot more than that. The earth was, and, and the heavens were a place where things happen and spirits and people reside, right? Praise the Amen. Lord. Amen. Yes. Well, you know, and Jesus talks about how the, uh, the Revelation talks about the river, f river, river flowing from the city, right? You know, Jesus tells us that in, you know, John 7, th uh, 738, that we're going to have r a river flowing yep. from us. Amen. That's exactly you know, he's right. He's telling us, yep. you know, this, and that's just confirmation of what, what we're talking about here. Right. He said there's going to be a river flowing from those who believe. Yes. From, from, from those who believe in him. There's going to be a river. That's and that's right. the river. Exactly right. Praise God. Praise God. <laughs> yes. Amen. Verse 2, John saw uh, the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, mm. prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Now, when I was first saved, you know, it was pounded into me, and rightly so, Amen. that the church, <laughs> the church is the body of Christ. Well, and that's true. But not only that, it's the bride of Christ, right? He's the groom, we're the bride. Well, here in this scripture, in the King James Version, <coughs> it said, I saw a holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of, from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Well, okay, that new Jerusalem has come in the kingdom, Amen. has come to reside in us. Praise the Lord. It is now not a physical reality around us, but he has come to indwell in the inside of us. Praise the Lord. Well, now who lives in that new Jerusalem? <laughs> the Father and the Son dwells there, right? And we are it, the fullness of the Godhead. John 14, we will come and make our home in you. Yes, absolutely. And, and the Colossians 1, or excuse me, chapter 2, where it says, in Christ, the fullness of the Godhead resides there. Right. Well, if I'm in, in, <laughs> in, in, and if I'm in Christ, and that's in Him, guess what's in me? Right. Praise the Lord. It's all right here. It's all right there. It's all inside of us. And we have tended all of our life to live from up here and not from here. How sad is that? When the kingdom of God is inside of us, and yet we act and react from the outside in more often than we should, we're, we're designed to live from the inside out. Verse 3 of Revelation 21. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. Amen. He will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. Mm. Praise the Lord. And Paul wrote in Corinthians, he said, Hey, don't you know that you're the temple of God? Amen. You know, that he resides inside of us to will and to do his good pleasure. And that verse says, the tabernacle of God is with men. Yes. With them. Yeah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Yes. Yeah. It's a new creation reality for, the, for all of us. You know, and, and if you stop and think about it, it can get to be uh, bigger than you are quickly because the creator of heaven and earth has come to live in me and you. The Bible says, as we said earlier in 1 Corinthians 6, 17, that we become one spirit. Now think about this. If I can put God in front of me here for a minute, I'm one spirit with him. Same thing has happened to you. You're one spirit with him. Everybody in this body is one spirit with him. But that makes us one spirit together. But my focus was, is with him. Your focus is with him. We're all going to end up at the same place. 
with the same love, with the same presence, and with the same purpose, and with the same results. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Praise the, Lord. Praise the Lord. Verse 4. And God will wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, mm -hmm. neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Well, and, you know, <coughs> in context of what we've been talking about here, people come and say, well, how can, how can this be? How can Revelation 21 and these verses be real now? Uh, there's obviously still tears. And there's death, people die, and there's sorrow and crying and, and pain and so forth. So it's still here, so this can't be true. Well, the secret is, and unfortunately it, it tends to be a secret, is that Jesus has dealt with all of this. Amen. Isaiah 53, 5, he bore our griefs, he bore our sorrows, he bore our pains, he bore everything that's again opposed to us. He took it on himself and conquered it and destroyed it. He destroyed all the works of the devil. Praise the Lord. Now, it's incumbent upon us to go back to his word and find it out and join hand in hand with him and conquer this stuff that comes at us here in the earth. Because we know what the end state is. He spoke the end from the beginning. Healing is the end state. He bore our sorrow. No sorrow is the end state. He bore our tear. He bore all of that. So the end state is all of this is gone. So if I join hand in hand with him, we're going to end up at that place, right? That aspect of doing that is called faith. Amen. Walking by faith. Taking his promises, believing his promises, and begin to speak his promises and declare the end from the beginning the way he did. Praise the Lord. Jesus said, Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatever he says. Praise God. So if I begin to take his promises, put them in my mouth, put them in my heart, become one of with him in agreement with his word and don't let anything around me that I see, hear, feel, taste, or touch sway me, I'm going to end up at the same place. But it's a choice I have to make. And my wife, we were talking about this yesterday and she hit pause button for me for a second and, I, and she's absolutely right and I want to say it here. What we're talking about here is I believe us as believers moving into the maturity where we no longer identify with the one, the sick, but we identify with Jesus. Amen. We see everything from a different perspective. We begin to see the healing. We begin to see the prosperity. We begin to see all those things that he died to give us. We identify with him instead of identifying with being broke or sick or whatever the circumstances may be. But in that growth process, it's, it's a growing process whereby we go from faith to faith, from glory to glory in that growth process. Wherever anybody is, God will meet you there. If it's, hey, I don't know what you know or maybe I'm not in the Word, but I've got sickness in my body. Well, the Word says, if any to agree is touching anything, find somebody to agree with you. The Word says, if there are any sick in, among you, let them call for the elders of the church, anoint with oil. Let's go to that place and set ourselves, so, that's a promise. Let's set, go there and agree, get hand in hand. Let's get it done, get it fixed. But the ultimate is for us, I believe, to grow up into the maturity, into the stature of Christ, and begin to oper allow him to operate through us the way he did when he was here. Can we do that? I believe there's a place that we can. But if I only preach, if I only give you the word that says, agree, with, get somebody to agree with you, that's where you're going to stay. Amen. Or if I'm going to say, call, 
stay preaching, call for the elders of the church. You're going to be on the phone. Yep. But the Word of God is challenging us to the end state, to go to the end result of where we are designed to ultimately be. Praise the Lord. As we grow in Him, we should come to that place. But don't get one place and stop. <clears throat> Let's keep moving. Let's keep moving in the Word, allowing that desire that Pastor talks about to grow in us. I, I don't, I don't want to be dependent on anybody but Jesus. He is my source. He is my life. He is all in all to me. Do I love the people of me? Absolutely. Do, do I trust them? Absolutely. Do I go to them in, to get agreement? Absolutely. But my faith is in Jesus. Praise the Lord. I want to develop my faith to the point where, hey, you can call me. I'll agree with you. You know, I want to be the one that's in agreement with you. I don't want to just be the one always looking for somebody to agree with. Does that make sense? Yes. Praise Amen. God. And that's where I believe Jesus in these, what I believe to be these latter days, is taking us not by power, not by might, but it's by the Spirit of the living God as He reveals His Word inside of us. We begin to take our place. Praise the Lord. Wow. <clears throat> verse 20, Verse 5. He that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. Mm. Praise the Lord. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. In verse 6, And he said unto me, It is done. Wow. It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hmm. <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. And you, you remember you mentioned earlier, and you kind of quoted Revelation 22 earlier, verse 1 and 2. If, if I can read yes, those two absolutely. verses. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. And in the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. Praise the Lord. Now, we've talked about, in, in verse 1, it says, He showed me a pure river of water of life, crystal, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. What's he talking about? It's what I believe you quoted from John 7, 37 and 38, where Jesus said, Out of our innermost being will flow rivers of living water. R rivers of living water. Now, I want you to pause for a moment. In Revelation 1.15, John was on the Isle of Patmos and he heard a voice behind him and it was the sound of many waters. It was the voice of Jesus, the sound of many waters. And you'll find that phrase over and over again. The water of life, the Spirit of God flowing out of us is His Word it's His Spirit, but it's our voice. Mm. We are the voice of the world, of the Spirit in this earth. That's why it's so important to speak the Word only, to declare the Word of God and cause things to be created or, or things to change or things to happen. Praise the Lord. We have the throne. We've just read that in Revelation 21. The, the New Jerusalem, the throne of God has come, the kingdom has come to reside inside of us. The, the fullness of the Godhead resides inside of us. And out of that throne flows rivers. Here it calls it pure water, the water of life, clear as crystal, flows out of us by the Spirit of God. And remember we, we talked about earlier in, I think in Joshua 1.8 and certainly in Psalms 1, where 
David was there stated, he said, if you'll meditate in my word day and night, you'll become like a tree that's planted where? By the rivers of water that brings forth much fruit in its season. It leaves, its leaves will not wither and whatever it does prospers. Praise the Lord. And the vision that the Lord gave me on this is we become like a tree planted by the rivers of water. On the one hand, it all flows out of us from the throne room. But he said this tree is also, the leaves of it are for a healing of the nations, right? So if I'm a tree, these are my limbs, my arms, but my hands are the leaves. Mm. The hands are the leaves. Jesus said in, in Matthew 28 and also in Mark 16, 15, he said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. Lay hands on the sick and what will happen? They will recover. They will recover. Praise the Lord. And here he said in verse 2 of Revelation 22, in the midst of the street of it on either side of the river, there was a tree of life that bare, bare fruit, 12 manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. Can you imagine who you are in Christ? Amen. Praise the Lord. Mm. And, and the mandate that we have, we are to have exactly what he said in Genesis 126 and 127 and 128. We are his body, his temple, his tabernacle. Just like Jesus was, right? Amen. And what did he say in John 14, 12? He said, we're going to do the same works and even greater works. Absolutely. He said, and he also said, it's the Father. Doing the work in me. It's the doing Word. The work. Doing the, yes. The Word. Yes. So the, I'm speaking the Word and the Father's doing the work. Praise the Lord. Praise that's the how Lord. Jesus did it, and that's how we're doing it. Yeah, absolutely. And as we build, as Pastor said, as we build our expectation and begin to move to this high, into his promises, which are a higher level, he said that in Isaiah 55, right? He said, my thoughts aren't your thoughts, but he didn't say I couldn't take his thoughts. Yes, because we now have the mind <laughs> of Christ. And we do, praise the Lord. And he said, my word is higher than your thought. My word is higher than your word. Come on, my ways are higher than your ways. So what we do is we bring ourselves. His word is higher. His thoughts are higher. We bring ourselves in line with those higher thoughts by meditating in them day and night and planting them inside of us and begin to speak them. We begin to take part of his divine nature through the exceeding great and precious promises of God. Wow. Praise the Lord. You know, the, the more I read this, I, the more <laughs> excited I get, praise the Lord, of who we are, not yeah, because awesome. of what I've done, but what he's done Amen. and made available to us. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And the more clear, it, the clearer it gets. You know what I mean? The yeah. clearer it gets. It's yeah. just like, oh, how did I miss that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow, and you just, you get so obsessed with it, you want all there is. Oh, praise the Lord. Yeah, oh. praise the Lord is right. Praise the Lord. Well, did we, did we do verse 27 or 21, seven? Did I we? I don't, I don't think we got to that one yet. Okay, we, you wanna read it? Verse 21, seven. He that overcome, overcometh shall inherit all things. Oh yeah, praise the Lord. And I will be his God and he shall be my son. Praise the Lord. Man. <laughs> If that's not the if that's not the truth, yes, <laughs> <I> yes, mean, <laughs> that's what he's promised us over and over and over again. Well, think about this. For Jesus is true today. He's in us, but here here we are. He has spoken the the end from the beginning. I'm here facing all this trash around me in the earth system, the fallen system, and I'm not seeing much victory are overcoming and I'm not seeing much necessarily. I'm not inheriting much. So what I, how do I change that? I take his word, this overcome everything. 
praise the Lord. Heaven and earth are pass away, but the word of God never will. In fact, mm-hmm. he's yeah. in, in Psalms, he's, he said, I've magnified my word even above my name. So if I'm going to overcome, I'm going to have to take the tools he's given me to do that. He's already told me how it's going to come out. He's told me the end. I'm healed. I'm prosperous. He said in Psalms 112, verse 3, wealth and riches are in my house. So that overcoming part is something I do in him by the word of God. He that overcomes shall inherit all things. The truth is I've already inherited it. Amen. We're co-heirs with Christ. I've already got it. I just need to find it out and believe it, right? Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah, Hebrews, you know, I think it was a Hebrews 1, 1 says that Jesus is the rightful owner of everything. Yeah. He's already right. taken everything. And I think in John 15, he talks about how the Spirit is going to bring us the like, revelation of what belongs to Jesus and make it known to us. Right. Like, because we're supposed to be taking possession of it. Yes. By faith. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Well, and that's at the end of the prophecy. He said all of this has to be done in the faith realm. Amen. It's all by faith. You cannot get it any other way except by faith, by believing. Without faith, it's impossible to, to receive. It. The truth is you've got it already. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Wow. Yeah, I just want to thank you again for taking the time to just, you know, dig into these scriptures with us and wow. you know and it feels like we're just we just scratched the surface to be honest doesn't it <laughs> yeah <laughs> doesn't it, though? it just feels yeah. like we just yeah we just just started scratching the surface praise um, the lord you know and i i know you do the ex- express image teaching uh again that's express image teaching that right now the those that teaching is uh live on 6 30 p.m on friday nights 6 30 yeah. p.m central standard time on friday nights uh, you can watch that live streamed on um, the the Roku channel or the app or online, or you can always go back to our archives on, on any of those locations, ivictorycenter.org, um, the Roku, the app. And uh, y- this is, for the most part, a weekly weekly teaching, unless there's a special event or something's going on. Um, and and you you're really, I know you've laid the foundation for that teaching on for what we just covered it, during that express image and you're going to continue to do that and then right. um, what we're doing on Sunday mornings you know at Victory Center the uh, uh, Victory Live on Sunday mornings Praise you can Lord. catch that at uh, 10 a.m. Central Standard Time live or you can you know c- catch the archives or the replay or uh, your local uh, television listings check your local time time and station for where, where you would catch that on there as well um, but man it just feels like we're just getting started. Praise the Lord. And it keeps Amen. getting better and better. Amen. And we're just getting started. And we have five seconds left. Praise the Lord. I'm <laughs> glad I looked at that. Oh. Wow. Well, thank you, Jesus, for this opportunity. And we just believe that his word will not return void. And you are going to live at a higher level of victory than you ever thought was possible through the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name, be blessed. Amen. Amen.